Welcome to ASVAB Tutoring. In this video, we will go over 15 questions of mechanical comprehension for the SIFT test. Download the SIFT tutoring from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store to practice more. Question 1. Two wheels are connected by a belt as shown below. If the wheel B makes one revolution, the wheel A makes A. Less than one revolution. B. Exactly one revolution. C. More than one revolution. D. Can't be determined. The answer is A. Wheel A is larger than wheel B, so the same belt length moved by one revolution of B wraps around a smaller portion of A's circumference. Since it needs more belt length to complete one full revolution, it will rotate less than one full turn when B makes one revolution. Question 2. A man sits in a car's driving seat, waiting for the green signal. As the light turns green, he steps on the accelerator. At the moment the car begins to accelerate, what is his weight pushing into the seat relative to while the car was stationary? A. Less than while stationary. B. More than while stationary. C. The same as while stationary. D. The weight of the driver does not depend on the acceleration of the car. The answer is A. As the car begins to accelerate, inertia causes the driver to be pushed backward relative to the accelerating car. This reduces the normal force between the driver and the seat, making his apparent weight less than when the car was stationary. Question 3. Robert is swimming across a fast-moving stream exactly perpendicular to the banks. When he arrives at the opposite bank, where would his position be relative to his starting position? A. Directly across from where he started. B. Upstream from where he started. C. Downstream from where he started. D. There is not enough information to determine. The answer is B. Even though Robert swims perpendicular to the banks, the fast-moving current of the stream pushes him downstream as he crosses. Since the stream's velocity is added to his motion, he will end up downstream of his starting point, not directly across from it. Question 4. In a fluid, an object falls at a steady speed when all forces are balanced. Which term is used for speed? A. Initial speed. B. Terminal velocity. C. Drift velocity. D. Viscosity. The answer is B. When an object falls through a fluid and all forces, like gravity and drag, balance out, it reaches a constant speed, known as terminal velocity. At this point, the object no longer accelerates and continues to fall at a steady speed. Question 5. At what point is the velocity of a bullet fastest? A. When it reaches the first quarter of its path. B when it reaches the top of its arc. C. When it hits the target. D. When it leaves the muzzle. The answer is D. The velocity of a bullet is fastest when it leaves the muzzle, because it's at its maximum kinetic energy right after firing. As the bullet travels, air resistance gradually reduces its speed. By the time it hits the target, its velocity has decreased due to this resistance. Question 6. In which case is the rate of heat exchange faster? A. Between an ice cube and 100 degrees glass of water. B. Between an ice cube and 40 degrees glass of water. C. Between one ice cube to another ice cube at the same temperature. D. None of the above. The answer is A. The rate of heat exchange is fastest between an ice cube and 100 degrees Celsius glass of water because the temperature difference between the ice cube and the hot water is greatest. A larger temperature difference increases the rate of heat transfer, as heat flows more rapidly from the hotter object to the colder one. Question 7. One half of glass P and three quarters of glass Q are filled with water at 50 degrees Celsius. Which glass would melt more ice in a given amount of time? Given that the two glasses have the same capacity, A. 
Glass P. B. Glass Q. C. They would melt an equal amount of ice. D. Melting ice does not depend on the amount of water. The answer is B. The amount of ice melted depends on the total heat energy transferred, not just the amount of water. Both glasses with the same capacity have water at the same temperature, so the heat energy available for melting ice is proportional to the amount of water. Since glass Q has more water than glass P, glass Q would melt more ice. Question 8. If two objects collide with each other and there is no other external force, a. The sum of their energy must remain constant. b. The sum of their velocity remains constant. c. The sum of their momentum will be conserved. d. They do not exchange momentum. The answer is c. In the absence of external forces, the total momentum of the two colliding objects is conserved. This means that the sum of their momenta before and after the collision remains constant. However, the sum of their velocities and energy might change due to the nature of the collision, elastic or inelastic. Question 9. The cross-section of a wing is shown below. Air travels over it and under it indicated by arrows. As the wing moves through the air, the relative speed of air is a. Greater above the wing b. Greater below the wing. c. The same above and below the wing. d. Can't determine. The answer is a. The airfoil shape causes air to travel faster over the curved upper surface and slower under the flatter bottom surface. According to Bernoulli's principle, faster moving air results in lower pressure. This pressure difference generates lift. Therefore, the relative speed of air is greater above the wing. Question 10. When is it more difficult to hold an inflated beach ball under water? A. When the ball is half immersed in the water. B. When the ball is deep down in the water. C. The difficulty is the same at either depth. D. There is not enough information to determine. The answer is B. It is more difficult to hold an inflated beach ball underwater when it is deep down because the buoyant force increases with depth. This force opposes the force you exert to keep the ball submerged, making it harder to hold the ball as you go deeper. Question 11. If pendulum P has the same length as pendulum Q, which pendulum would take more time to make one swing? A. Pendulum P. B. Pendulum Q. C. Each would take the same time to make one swing. D. The pendulum has more mass. The answer is C. For a simple pendulum, the period of oscillation, time for one swing, depends on the length of the pendulum and the acceleration due to gravity, but not on the mass of the pendulum. Since both pendulums have the same length, they will have the same period of oscillation regardless of their mass. Question 12. A piece of soft wire that melts, breaking a circuit if an electrical current exceeds a certain level, is called a. A circuit breaker b. A fuse c. An automatic switch d. A thermocouple The answer is b. A fuse is a safety device that melts and breaks the circuit when the electrical current exceeds a certain level. This prevents damage to the circuit and reduces the risk of electrical fires. A circuit breaker can be reset after tripping, while a thermocouple measures temperature. Question 13. John kicked a football so that the force from his foot went through the ball's center of gravity. How will the ball travel due to the applied force? A. Tumble end over end. B. Spin on its axis. C travels in a curved path. d. Move with no spinning or tumbling. The answer is d. If John kicks the football with the force going through its center of gravity, the ball will move in a straight line without spinning or tumbling. The force applied through its center of gravity ensures no rotational motion, 
so the ball travels in the direction of the applied force without additional spinning. Question 14. The amount of power output from a AC generator will be a. More than the mechanical power driving it. b. Less than the mechanical power driving it. c. The same as the mechanical power driving it. d. Output power is independent of input power in AC generator. The answer is b. The amount of power output from an AC generator is typically less than the mechanical power driving it. This is because some energy is lost as heat due to inefficiencies in the generator's components, such as friction and electrical resistance. Therefore, the output power is always less than the input mechanical power. Question 15. Which electrical quantity is represented by units of ohms? A. Capacitance. B. Voltage. C. Resistance. D. Power. The answer is C. Ohm is the unit used to measure electrical resistance. Capacitance is measured in farads, symbol F, voltage in volts, symbol V, and power in watts, symbol W. To practice more, download the SIFT tutoring from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.